Stand up, please. Please stand up. Turn to your neighbor and say, wake up. I mean, really. What a beautiful day. Smile about it. Do something. Give us some expression. Everybody give another round of applause for Josh and Elizabeth. Thank you, thank you so much. You may be seated for the next two and a half hours. No, I'm joking. She tried to warn you. you had, now was your chance. Uh, there are a few chairs kind of scattered over here. They're in groups of three or four or five if you need a place. There are some more chairs kind of scattered in here. What a joy it is to see everybody here this morning. I welcome you as we begin our worship time together now. Uh, we've already kind of been headed into worship as they've led us in the music that we've had. And we're so grateful for all that God is doing for us today. There are a few things that I do need to mention to you. You'll notice in your uh, program book here, not only the order of worship, but the order of the day and what's going to be taking place. There is something here for everybody. Trust me. Pecan pie to sugar cane chewing to uh, all kinds of stuff. Pumpkin patches to kids' activities to worship time to opportunities to have food and fellowship and fun together. And I invite you a lot of wonderful entertainment that will be coming this afternoon from uh, Polk City, who's coming to be with us this morning. Or, excuse me, let me say this, Polkville. Is that right? Polkville City Limits. I almost had it right, didn't I, Mr. J? Polkville City Limits to the Pearl Ch High School Chamber Singers uh, and everything in between. Uh, we're excited to have everyone here with us today. Uh, and so I invite you to hold on to this so you'll see what's going on when. There is a schedule there. Also, there's our thank yous to everybody, which has been a wonderful, wonderful week. Ushers have more of these. If you didn't get one, Hugh is over here waving it. Just wave your hands. They'll be glad to get them to you. Um, also, uh, just let you know real quick, there are no activities for this evening, including strength for the journey or youth or children's activities. However, you're invited to stay here until 3.30 or come back at 3.30 to help us take all of these wonderful things and get them back into the church building. Uh, that will be wonderful for you to uh, stay and help us do that. But otherwise, there are no evening activities. Next Sunday evening, we invite all of you back at 6 p.m., the Millsaps Chambers uh, Choir will be with us and be leading us in our, in our sanctuary, and it'll be a wonderful experience together. On the back of your brochure is a save the date for a lot of things, including our church uh, council retreat that will be this coming Saturday. I remind you of that. We don't have the schedule for conversations with the pastor in this program, but it's available in the church. Uh, this week, I know I'll be meeting. I know I'll be meeting with the Hannons and the Grants, and there may be another one. Uh, but I know those two are going this week. We started last week just having simple conversations with the pastors in small groups, and what a joy it's been uh, to have that beginning. What a what a great time that is together. So just remind you that that's going on as well. Um, notice the save the dates on the back. Notice that our children are ready for us to begin worship. And so we're going to do just that. Our call to worship is going to be led by people who have come from near and far and gathered in the tents for this wonderful festival uh, as we began our worship time together. Come, listen to the word of the Lord. Help us to receive God's word and direction for our lives. Proclaim the goodness of God's love. Let our voices and our actions be filled with love. Let God's praise be heard in the midst of the congregation. Shout praise to the Lord of hosts. Let God's praise be proclaimed wherever we are. May we praise God in all that we do and say. Come, now is the time to worship. Open our eyes, our hearts, our spirits this day. Amen.
invite you to stand this morning and join us as we sing Come Thou Found. You'll find it in your program booklet as well. The words are in there, so join with us. Come Thou Found, every blessing, tune my heart to sing Thy grace, streams of mercy, ever ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise, teach me into a time of prayer this morning, we lift up all of those that are on our prayer book this day. We lift up Linda Grafton, Christy Pennington Shanks, Larry Creel, Marty Gooding, Francis Shelton, Robert Galay, Melba Nail, and for safe travels for Miss Billy Chambers as she travels for the death of her cousin. Please join me now in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you so much for this amazing morning that we have already had, and we come in praise and thanksgiving as we worship you with our whole hearts this day. Bless this time together, O oh Lord, as we celebrate all you have given us and find more ways to give back to you and those in need. May this day bring fellowship and joy, laughter and fun, but more than anything, O oh Lord, let it be a time that we gather as your body for a greater purpose. In these moments, dear God, we lift up our prayers spoken aloud this day, as well as those concerns that we lift up to you in silence. Comfort your people, O oh Lord. Gather them in your arms. Strengthen and encourage them. Offer them your peace and calming spirit in their struggles, your mercy and your grace. Surround them with others who will walk with them on their journey. We stand amazed at your presence in our lives, O oh God, and the power of your spirit to guide and protect us. Help us find more ways to be a witness in our world, in our community, our state, and beyond. For your mighty love is much too big not to be shared, as is the hope and peace that you bring. We pray all of this in your most precious name, as we pray the prayer that you taught all of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship God as we give back, as we offer to God our tithes and our offerings. <laughs>
this one. Our scripture lesson this morning is Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. So when they had come together, they asked, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I'm going to invite us to pray uh, before we sing a special song. Um, and I'm going to ask Josh to pray for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to be here in the middle of your space that you created with a single breath. It's pretty amazing what you can do. And all the while, you know our name. So we just thank you that to the ends of the earth, every single person that's there, that exists and that's ever been, you know their name. Be with us today as we continue in our worship and hear from you in Christ's name. Amen. Love and overtaking my heart. You take me in, finding peace again. Fear is lost in all you. give the world to tell your story cause I know that you've called me I know that you've called me I've lost myself for good within your promise and I won't hide it I won't hide it Jesus I
Amen. Well, we're here because we want to support mission, right? And we have some of our friends from the Trinity Mission with us today. And I want to acknowledge that and give thanks. Will y'all just raise your hand so we'll know kind of where you... Thank you for being here. Some of you have had the opportunity to go share with them in ministry and mission, and they've been with you before here at this experience. We're grateful they're here. But there are many other missions that we're involved in and many other things that we're seeking to do today. And we give thanks to God again for this gorgeous day. Um, I, it could have been a lot worse. I, I was playing my little diva mode and told them, well, I'm going to be looking right at the sun. But since you have your sunshades on, I'm going to keep mine, okay? Uh, what a joy it is to be able to share together in this place. We did want to gather for worship and give thanks to God for what he's done and hear God's word that Madison so wonderfully read for us this morning and to hear just a little bit about what God's leading us to. I remember that the first time I really acknowledged um, two things. One, what mission really is and what it can do and what it's about. And that was early on in my life uh, in growing up in Cumbus Bluff. The other thing... The second thing that I acknowledged was that the world was bigger than Cumbus Bluff, Mississippi. And it extended beyond Hurley, Wade, and Three Rivers and went somewhere else. And they began to show me a, a globe and, and maps that indicated that the world was much bigger than what I had experienced. But the one thing that I recall the most is that every meal time at our house, especially the supper time meal, because normally at lunch it was a sandwich in the field somewhere or something like that. Um, there was this little um, small tin bank that was sitting on our table. And on that tin bank was a slot in the top that we could put our coins in. And on the side of that was the name of Bruce Olson. Does anybody remember Bruce Olson? There are a couple of people here who remember that name. Bruce Olson was my first exposure to the world of mission, and he was a missionary in the old school sense of the word. Bruce Olson had left his comfortable place here in the United States and gone to the jungles, South America, where he became involved with an indigenous tribe called the Modalon Indians. And his goal was to do two things. So one was to help with medical care that they may need, and he had a little bit of skills in that. But the most, the primary thing was to become a part of their culture and help translate the Bible into their language so that they could understand it and to use it. And the way he felt that would be done best is that he went and lived among them and learned the language and shared with them. That was my first exposure to a world that was bigger than Cumbus Bluff. But it was also my first exposure as each night we remembered as we dropped our coins in the little bank and said a prayer for Bruce Olson and those who were learning about Jesus uh, in the Modalone tribe. The mission continues. It seems as though the older I get, the closer the mission field gets to my front door. How about you? What we once thought was out there somewhere is now right around us. And today God's calling us to come outside the doors of our church and to be a witness of his grace, his love, his protection. We are intrigued by God's call. I was always intrigued by the way Bruce presented himself and God's call on his life and on his visits when he came to see us at our church. And to tell us about the needs, but then as I began to open my eyes to the world, I began to see the needs that were right around us. Luke, and he is in his second part of his gospel, which we know is the book of Acts, uh, tells us Jesus' last words. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. I hear those words, and I'm reminded of God's call upon all of our lives. There's, there's a twofold thing here I want to share with you, or threefold. One, you will receive power. The Holy Spirit of God brings power upon us. Immediately following this experience, Jesus ascended into heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. And as the disciples 
continued to pray together, God's presence came in a very real way in what we know as the day of Pentecost. And so it was very obvious and evident that they received the power of God. So the first thing I ask you this morning, have you received the power of God in your life? We've heard about Jesus. We've heard about how he can transform us and make us new. But have you really received the power that God's presence gives you for each day of your life? Have you prayed that God will come and be present in you in power? We receive the power. Do you know his guidance? Do you know his strength? And the second thing is, you will be my witnesses. Now, I kept breaking that down, trying to see where the emphasis should go. And so I think that, that Jesus really placed it on all of the words. You, yes, you. Yes, you group of disciples who followed me, but yet on the crucial moments of my life and even in my death, you denied me. You ran away and hid. Yes, you. You who could do nothing more than gather in an upper room and pray. Yes, you. You who will be restored by God's grace and God's power and presence. You will be my witnesses. You have, who have received God's grace and forgiveness. You who have known his presence. You who have journeyed through the issues of this life. And it's pain and sorrow. Yes, you will be his witnesses. You will be. <laughs> uh, I remember my dad always occasionally would come to, the, to me and say, Chris, you will do this. Or you will be that. Or you will be here. And for me, there was no question. There was no argument, right? Did anybody else grow up with that? Not you may be or not you can be even, Jesus says. You will be. How many of us are really living in to what God's called us to be as his witnesses for Jesus Christ? You will be my witnesses. And then you will be my witnesses. Jesus knew that the people he was speaking to had been first eyewitnesses to his life, death, resurrection, and now would be to his ascension. And they would be the ones to give testimony. They would be the ones who could give a personal accounting of. They would be the ones who could stand up and say what had really happened because they had seen it for themselves. You will be my witnesses. You will be the ones that will furnish proof of to have personal or direct cognizance of. That's how Webster defines it, as a witness. You will be the ones to tell others and to show others. God has worked so powerfully in the midst of our lives and given us his grace and love, and we're called to be his witnesses to give personal testimony. So how do we do that? A couple quick things. One, we're the people who know the source. First, we have to know the source of our power. We have to know who it is our power comes from. We have to know the God who gives us life and forgiveness and hope in Jesus Christ. We have to know the source. Know who God is in our lives and how he's working. That's okay. That's just for your real refreshment afterwards. Nobody's about to get run over. You will know the source. Secondly, God calls us to speak the word. To tell other people. Who have you told lately about God? No, our conversation is consumed at the moment, right? It has to be consumed. I mean, us folks in Mississippi who follow Ole Miss and Mississippi State can't talk about anything else right now. I mean, it won't be long. We may not be able to talk about it again, right? So we got, amen, we got to take care of it now. What if we approach with the same immediacy, speaking a word on behalf of Jesus Christ? Or in your conversations, are you looking for an opportunity to speak a word, to share what God's done in your life? Are you looking for an opportunity to be a witness by 
speaking the truth of God into their lives. Another thing I think we're to know the source, to speak the word, to share the grace, to live our lives in such a way that we seem as though we have been redeemed from something and that God's grace is real in our lives so we offer that grace to others. And fourthly, we do it by living a life. The United Methodist Church added at its last general conference in its membership vows not only that we support the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, but also our witness. Are you living your life in such a way that you're giving testimony to the grace of God that comes in Jesus Christ, to the power of God that comes through His indwelling Holy Spirit that gives us life? You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Will you be my witnesses in Brandon, here at home? Will you be my witnesses in Judea, in the surrounding area, the countryside, the county? Will Rankin County be a place that you will give witness? It's interesting here, Jesus says, and he probably needed to say, and Samaria. Because Israel was separated by a country between them. The area of Judea and Jerusalem was separated by Samaria, which was the outcast, the rough place, the, the hood. It was the place nobody wanted to go. Really, God? Samaria? Brandon. Rankin County. What if God's calling us to go to Pelahatchee? Or to Morton? Yeah, you're following me, right? Or the inner city, Jackson. What if God leads us back into Samaria to be his witnesses? And to the ends of the earth. Wherever you go, you have an opportunity to be a witness. Maybe that's in Brazil or Costa Rica or Honduras or in Africa. Maybe God calling you to go be a witness to the world. God's calling us to be his witness. I found an interesting quote that was in the Wesley Study Bible, and it shares this. Wesley reminded us not to be stuck thinking that God only shows up inside the church or inside the four walls of whatever box we put God in. I promise you I'm reading this. It's not me making this up. God's presence and activity encompass the whole world indeed the ends of the earth so ministry and mission are possible everywhere church structures help us do ministry but ministry is not confined to those structures wesley insisted when he said the world is my parish that we share the good news of god's love and do good in all places god is pulling us to participate in god's work in the world God is always ahead of us in ministry, down the block, across the country, and around the world. The church as the body of Christ is never holed up inside a building, but is sent to the world to proclaim the good news. Well, we've taken the first step out. <laughs> the church is still in sight. <laughs> but are we going to go to the world to be his witnesses? Will you follow God in mission and in ministry? God calls us. God calls you to be his witness today. Thanks be to God for his call and for his word and for the opportunities he gives us to live out our faith. We're going to sing together a closing hymn, and I invite our song, and I'm going to invite you to pray that God will send you wherever God's seeking to send you. Don't leave yet. We're going to finish singing, and I'll come back up and give you a few instructions as we go from there.
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas great. That taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are. God. 